Since so let's proceed, I'm very happy to announce Namrata Anand, who is a well-known face to Klinam. He presented last year on the malaria model, pregnancy model in mice, and the use of nanoparticles. So we are very anxious to hear now your, your progress. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, sir, for the introduction. Uh, I'm a postdoctoral student from India, and I'm here to present some part of my work, which is related with the pregnancy-induced complications and placental malaria. So as we know that there are approximately 50 million pregnant women they are infected with placental malaria. Now, what is placental malaria? It's a sequestration of the infected RBCs in the placenta. And sometimes this placental malaria, it is co found to be coexist with the preeclampsia. Pleeclampsia, it's a pregnancy-induced complication, which is usually occur after 20 weeks of the gestation period. And approximately 10 to 20 percent of the co cases have been found to be coexist with the placental malaria. Pleeclampsia, it is usually characterized by the hypertension and the proteinuria. And there are various biomarkers which is known to identify the preeclampsia at the early onset. They include the various biomarkers such as the angiopoietins. Now, we have angiopoietins 1, which is responsible for the angiogenesis of the placenta. But angiopoietin 2 is uh, showing the opposite effect, that it acts as an anti-angiogenic component. Another important uh, preeclampsia biomarker is the vascular endothelial growth factor. Now, this VEGF growth factor, it is responsible for the vascularization as well as angiogenesis in the placenta. Another most important preeclampsia biomarker is a soluble FMS-like tyrosine kinase. Now, this is a co-receptor for the uh, vascular endothelial growth factor. And when there is a high concentration of SFLT1 in the serum of the pregnant woman, it may lead to the impaired angiogenesis or poor placental development. So, apart from these preeclampsia biomarkers, there are another cofactors which are responsible for the pregnancy-induced complications. These include the excess complement activation. Now, there are various studies which have reported that component of C3A and C5A, both of these components, they are responsible for the placental lysis, and approximately 8 to 18 percent of the PE cases, they are found to be coexist with the complement activation. Another most important factor in the malaria endemic area is the anemia. As the RBCs are being infected by the parastasia, uh, infected by the malaria, as we have approximately high serum iron levels and uh, low HV levels in case of the pregnant woman. So, all these factors, when they have present in their abnormal expression levels, they all may lead to the impaired angiogenesis and several maternal as well as the fetal outcomes which may lead to abortion, stillbirth, or preterm delivery in the endem malaria endemic areas. So, what was the rationale for our study? We tried to identify a single biological molecule, which is, which is able to combat against these pregnancy-induced complications, as well as which may be able to decrease the parasite load in the placental malaria. So, we have studied the bovine lactoferrin protein. It's an iron-containing milk protein, which has been used since decades as an antimicrobial agent. But its role in placental malaria has been studied for the first time. So, as we all know that we also need a protein molecule which is immunomodulatory, that boosts up the immune response of the mother, as well as the immune response of the developing fetus. So, the bovine lactoferrin protein has already been known as immunomodulator, and it has been used in the infant formula since uh, a long time. Also, we need uh, something to improve the efficacy of the drug as well as to the targeted delivery for the vertical transmission of the parasite uh, to the uh, loaded drug. So, what we have done, we have encapsulated this lactoferrin protein in alginate and chitosan coated nanoparticles. We have the uh, iron molecule, which is the protein inside the nanoparticles at the core as well as we have the chitosan, we have the chitosan and alginate coating. So, we have our uh, protein inside the, these nanoparticles and it is protected by the enzymatic actions of various, uh, enzymatic actions of various gastric and the intestinal pH. So, these nanoparticles, they have been given orally to all the mice and uh, we have uh, done the, our experiment on the placental malaria. Now, coming on to the procedure, we have uh, infected the pregnant female Balbsi mice at a gestation period of 10. 
and we have divided these mice into four groups. We have first group we have the mice which were infected but they were not given any treatment. Second we have the which were given the native form of the protein, no formulation at 3 mg per kg body weight. And third group we have in which we have given the nano formulation to the infected mice at the similar concentration. Third, fourth group is last the standard group. So what we have done at the gestation period of G18 and 19, we have separated the gravity uteri. We have separated this uh, fetus and the placenta for further parameters. Now what we have done, we have interrogated, we have tried to interrogate all these pregnancy induced complications using this bovine electrophilic nanocarriers. So coming on to the results, we have seen that there has been reduction in the parasite at when we have measured it from the peripheral parasitemia in the mouse stain blood as well as at the placental copy number. The parasite count has been found to be significantly least decreased in case of all the treatment groups when we have measured it at various gestation period. When we have seen the uh, ROS production, we have seen that uh, the ROS production was found to be less in case of the bovine electrophilic nanocarrier as well as the native form of the protein as compared with the treatment groups, which was found to be significantly decreased in both of the treatment groups. Even the chloroquine was not able to reduce the ROS production. But opposite was found in case of the nitric oxide. We have found the high levels of L-arginine in case of the placental serum levels of all these treated mice. Now, when we uh, talk about the angiogenesis, we have seen that there has been increase in angiopoietin-1 and VEGF levels in the treatment groups. But reverse were found in case of angiopoietin-2 and C5AR. C5AR, we have used this for the study of complement C5A expression at the mRNA level. So these two biomarkers they were found to be having significantly de decrease in the levels in the, all the treatment groups. But we have, when we have seen it from the soluble FMS like tyrosine kinase biomarker, we have found there has been no change in the mRNA expression. To further uh, postulate the hypothesis that these nanoparticles or the protein, it is helpful in controlling the complement mediated lysis, we have used a C5A antibody, that is PECD8 labeled antibody, which used to stain the C5A expressing cells in the placenta. And we have also tried to encounter that these uh, bovine electrophilic protein, when released from the nanoparticles, it goes to the placenta. So we have stained the placental cells with complement expressing antibody, that is the CD88, and the bovine electrophilic, it was labeled with the FITC marker. So we have, with the help of the contour plot, we have isolated these two populations. That is the CD88 positive population, which is showing the marker of C5A com 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 complement, and another marker which is showing the cells having the expression of the bovine electrophilic protein positivity. And we have also seen the dual population. So we have found that the highest number of the CD8 positive cells, they are, that is the C5A expressing cells, were found to be in the untreated group which was followed by the chloroquine. However, there was highly significant number of the less number of CD88 positive cells were only found to be from the bovine electrophilic nanocarrier group. Now, we wanted to further confirm these facts results with the immunohistochemistry that whether these bovine electrophilic nanocarrier particles, either they are they going or vertically transmitted to the placenta or not. So, we, when we have, we have used uh, HRP conjugated antibody for this uh, procedure and we have seen that when we stain the placental cells or the placental tissue of the untreated mice, we did not find any immunoreactivity with the bovine electrophilin protein. And next, when we have used the bovine electrophilin uh, tissue sections from the mice, we have seen that there is very slight positivity. But in case of the bovine electrophilin nano carrier group, we have seen that some of the trophoblast cells, they show the immunoreactivity with this protein. That signifies that these nano carriers, they have been transmitted to the fetus through the placenta, which is showing the bovine positivity in some of the trophoblast cells. So the last parameter that we tried to encounter was the RN metabolism. We have done the hematological as well as the biochemical parameters. And we have found that we did not find any significant change in any of the, these levels, except the serum iron levels and the TIBC, that is total iron binding capacity. 
we found that both of these levels they were found to be high in the untreated group because of the anemia loss of rbcs due to the high infection of the placental malaria and after that we also tried to localize the rn particles due to the rn toxicity in the various tissue sections and for that we have done the person blue per rn staining we have found it to be positive only in case of the spleen sections however sections of intestine liver and brain were not did not show any rn toxicity and we have found that the positivity was found to be only scattered there were no big rn complexes were found so this is how we signify that if there are big rn complexes present in the tissue sections they have a lot of rn complex formation and higher rn toxicity but in this case we did not find any large rn complexes in the various tissues now next we wanted to uh, study the mrna expressions of the various rn transporters when used in the intestine and the liver so we have studied rn transporters of in the intestine we have studied dctyb divalent metal ion transporters hemoxygenase 1 and hepatocin all these rn transporters they are used to transport the rn molecule inside the intestinal cells that is the enterocyte and the hepatocin it has been used to transport the rn outside the enterocytes so these are the various important rn transporters which are actually used to encounter the rn metabolism and we have found that the these three were found to be significantly high in case of the untreated group so that means that there is a, a increase need of the rn inside the untreated mice because of the anemia or the low rn concentration so an excess of the rn it is going also outside the enterocyte and there is not proper ferritin levels which may be present inside the enterocytes to maintain the proper rn metabolism significantly another uh, we have seen when we have studied these two biomarkers in the liver that is the hepcidin and the transferrin receptor and we have found when there is a high level of hepcidin was found in case of the untreated mice that means the rn requirement in the intestine or the liver of the cells this is high because of the high concentration of the hepcidin so we also found that there has been a high uh, th1 response in case of the mice and significantly high uh, tnf alpha and il17 levels were found to be in case of the bovine lactoferrin nano carriers and the treated group of the mice except the uh, in comparison with the untreated group so we have proposed this mechanism of action that when we have a untreated placental mice which is infected with the plasmodium bergeri or plasmodium falciparum we have increased concentration of angiopoietin 2 and we have the free levels of sflt1 now both of these biomarkers they lead to impaired angiogenesis and they may lead to activation of the complement pathway along with the presence of high concentration of the infected rbcs both of these factors they may lead to complement activation which ultimately give rise to the mac complex for formation and this complex it ultimately leads to the lysis of the trophoblast cells whereas in case of the bovine lactoferrin nano carrier group we have a balanced angiogenesis we have a high levels of angiopoietin 1 and we have bound vegf when vegf is bound with the sflt marker there is impaired the it does not lead to the impaired angiogenesis and we have less amount of infected rbcs in the circulating placenta which does not induce the mac complex formation or excess of complement activation and may lead to the survival of the trophoblast cells so to conclude these nanoparticles have acted as a single biological molecule to combat against the sorry to combat against the uh, high ros placent uh, production in the placenta decreased c5a mediated placental lysis they have maintained the rn metabolism in the mice and they have crossed the placental barrier and may have reached to the fetus so which was not alone maintained by or functioned by the chloroquine that we usually used in the uh, treatment groups so but there are still a lot of molecular and biological uh, parameters are to be studied for their further use into the humans thank you Well, I have one. I guess 
ultimately, if you want to use that in, in humans, if, if the, yeah, if a pregnant woman was treated, you would combine an antimalarial with a lactoferrin. Yes, sir, uh, there can be so a you do that in mice combination too? therapy. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, that would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Did you try it already in mice to see? No, sir, not happened? combination therapy, no. Thank you. Thank you so much.